I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Come on and magnify the Lord with me. I got a question for you. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. One more time. Who has the final say? I said, I have, no I have no reason, because the Lord is my life. Sing it again, choir, sing it again, choir. I have no reason. Come on, y'all, let's get live in the house today. Come on, put your hands together.
it is so good to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. Good morning, Valor. Yes. Oh, you know, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes. Key words there, let us go. He was glad that others desired to go. He was glad that they had the courage to invite others to come along. He knew that it would do them good. And so I got to tell you, it is so important that we gather together. And I want to share with you three reasons why. First, Richard Foster writes, to worship is to experience reality. It is to touch life. It is to know, to feel, to experience the resurrected Christ in the midst of the gathered community. It is a breaking into the Shekinah of God, or better yet, it is being invaded by the Shekinah of God. Yeah. Powerful. Yes. So precious is the experience of our worshiping together. Our vulnerability to God is most raw most tender and true when we're in worship. So yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's worship his name. Let's bless his name. Let's worship his name and, and say his name is great forever. Yes. Paul tells us in Ephesians that Christ himself gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip his people for the works of ministry yeah. that the body may be built up. Yes. Christ gifted the church with these offices for our growth. Let's not take any of them for granted, but let's gather with an appetite. Let's come hungry. Let's come and feast on the Word. The Word is our sustenance. Yes. The Word is our life. Oh, yeah. And third, we gather for community. Again, in Ephesians, we're told, Paul tells us that we are family members of the household of God. Abba is our father. We are sons and daughters of the living God. Yes. We are truly brothers and sisters to each other. Yes. Hebrews 10 tells us this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together. Some have formed that habit. In fact, we should come together all the more. We need each other. Our gathering is a refuge. It is home. It is a safe place. Yeah. It is a shelter in the storms of life. We're family. We're the people of God. We're the company of the redeemed. Let us make a renewed commitment to gather, not scatter. And let's restore the roar.
Praise a little louder. 
Come on, World Harvest Church, let's raise a hallelujah. Come on, let me hear your roar, Elkhart. Let me hear your roar, Columbus. Let me hear your roar online. Raise a hallelujah. Come on, silence is the language of defeat. Shouting is a language of victory. Somebody shout! Yeah. Hallelujah! Clapping! Hallelujah. Clapping is a language of authority. Somebody clap! <laughs> Running is a language of freedom. Somebody run! Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Let's shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Let me hear you roar! Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah! I said raise a hallelujah! Raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. My God. I believe God's about to reward some folk this morning for their commitment to his house and joining together in the assembly of the saints. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Let me hear your roar one more time. Roar. Hallelujah. Now slap two or three people a high five and tell them you're in the right place at the right time with the right people. Hallelujah. God bless you. We love you in Elkhart. Thank you to our online audience this morning. And those of you here in Columbus, we are so excited about what God is doing. Everybody, you may be seated this morning. Everybody grab your cell phone. Will you do that for me? Just grab your cell phone real quick. Our first daughter, Miss Ashton Parsley, teaches us that it's okay to use our cell phone for Jesus in the church. Amen? If you're a first-time guest with us this morning, we would love to say from our pastor's heart and our first family's heart, we welcome you, and we are so glad you're here. Would you make our first-time guests feel welcome? Yeah! If you're a first time guest, just grab that cell phone. If you would, we're gonna put a number on the screen and we would like you to text to that number on the screen there. Text to that number in the two, and in the two field, just put VIP, VIP, because you're a very important person to us today. And that text will tell us, uh, uh, give us a record of your attendance today and your first time with us. And from that text, we will send you a very special gift from our pastor this week in appreciation for you braving this weather to be with us at the Harv today. Amen. Thank you to our first time guests. Also, while the rest of you have your cell phones out, we have a text message system here uh, that alerts you of, of weather changes or, or information. And we want all of you that will and can here in an Elkhart to join us in, in that effort. It's a great communication tool. Everybody communicates by text today. And if you would, take out and to the number 292929. In the message portion, place join, J-O-I-N space, put a space, W-H-C bus, B-U-S. 292929, join, space, W-H-C bus bus and just follow the prompts that will come to your screen there and you will be connected and we will be able to communicate you to you in an efficient manner at a time when it is appropriate now tell your neighbor say neighbor this part of worship is going to take us to a new level tell them amen grab your bibles with me and turn to proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. I love to hear that sound, Pastor. I know you do. Hear that? The turning of pages. 
the books of our Bibles. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, says this. Honor, that's enough. Honor means to place first, to give preference to. Honor the Lord. Who? Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits. Everybody say the first fruits of all your increase. The principle of first fruits is what we're talking about in January. And it means this, it means the first tenth part of your increase immediately. Everybody say immediately belongs to God. I honor God with my first fruits by immediately honoring him with my substance, the 10% part. As a young boy, every Friday, most Fridays, not every Friday, I was picked up by my papaw stone from school. My papaw worked at General Motors and he he labored there and he got his paycheck every Friday and he would pick me and a couple cousins up. He was a, also a, a carpenter. He built every, every church I grew up in. There were three different buildings he built with his hand as a volunteer. I said as a volunteer. God used his gifting and his skill. That job at General Motors was just a tool to help him do kingdom work. And without fail, every Friday, he would take that, that paycheck of $237.50. Say, how do you know? Because I saw this so many times, I'll never forget it. It is printed upon my heart. And we would go to the bank and he would cash that. He would get cash. We didn't have debit cards then, obviously. He would get cash and he always had an envelope. It's like a, it was like our tithe envelopes, but it was the envelope that our church had as a boy. And he would slide that envelope across the counter and he would say, please place 10% rounded up into this envelope. And it got to a point where he would just slide the envelope and the young lady, she would always know what Papaw wanted to do. What was Papaw doing? He was honoring the Lord with the first fruits of all of his increase. My grandfather didn't have any sons. He had four daughters and he's the one who, from whom I learned to pray. And many nights he would go into his bedroom early about seven o'clock. We're like, wow, Papaw really goes to bed early. But here's what we discovered on that wooden floor after he passed away. There was a chair always next to his bed. We never asked, but after he passed, we asked our mamaw, Mamma, what was that chair about? She said, that represented God in our home. And there were grooved in that wooden floor, two knee prints were my papal. And I would hear these words, Father, save my family. Honor my giving so that I can further your kingdom work. And he would always say this, listen, God answers the prayers of those who honor him with the first fruits of their increase. And he said, God, you didn't give me any sons, but you gave me nine grandsons. And I pray God that you would raise up preachers and apostles and a prophets and evangelists and teachers out of those boys and that they will see what I see and they will labor in the kingdom. Let me tell you today, five of those nine boys are holding a microphone in a church service today declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ because somebody honored God in prayer and the first fruit of his labor. We would see that. See, the principle of first fruits means the first tenth part of your increase immediately belongs to the Lord. It's the best. It's not what's left over. Oh boy, there's Pastor Tim talking about Money, yeah, we're going to talk about money because it's our worship this morning. How many of y'all believe, as our pastor said, it's important to pray and God answers our prayer? Raise your hand, wave at me. Well, did you know that there's 500 references to prayer in the Bible from Jesus? But did you also know that there's over 2,000 references about stewardship from Jesus as he taught his disciples in the New Testament concerning stewardship? Two-thirds of Jesus' parables were on the topic of stewardship. Jesus taught his disciples this, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. We see the principle of first fruits in Joshua 6. Joshua and the people of Israel crossed the Jordan. And in that new Canaan territory, we know from church history that the people of Israel would fight 10 major battles. 
The first of those major battles was the Battle of Jericho. Let me tell you what the Bible says about the Battle of Jericho. It said in verse 17 of Joshua 6, the city and all that is in it are dedicated to the Lord for destruction. Verse 19 says, all the silver, gold, and bronze, and iron articles are set apart for the Lord. They will go into the treasury of the Lord. When God gave Joshua and the people this instruction, they understood, oh, this is the principle of first fruits. They already knew God was just speaking to them in a language. And we know the story that God instructed them for seven days to march around that wall, but not to bring the warriors, but to bring the worshipers this morning. That's why giving is worship this morning. Amen. And on the seventh day, they marched seven times. And the Bible tells us that those walls imploded. And Joshua, with a heart to obey God, did exactly what Joshua 6, 17 and 19 said. Here's the portent of connection in the body that our pastor talked about last week and will likely talk more about today. Listen, your victory and your obedience directly impacts everybody else in the body that God has established here in Columbus and there in Elkhart. But there's always an Aiken. I said there's always an Aiken that thinks they're smarter than God that thinks their plan is better than God. And the Bible says that they won Jericho and they went to the second of those 10 battles at Ai and they suffered defeat. 34 men were killed. It was a terrible defeat. Joshua began to repent and say, God, we must have sinned against you. And he brought the people before him. And when he came to the tent of Achan and his family, Achan confessed. Achan confessed to laying hold of what God said, give to him first. He took a gold bar, he took a silver bar, he took a robe that was supposed to be dedicated to God. See, it's important. I just imagine pastor a church where there are committed, consecrated, first fruit, 10% obedient tithers. I can imagine it. And I can only imagine what God would do among a group of people like that. The miracles, the signs, the wonders, the salvations among the 576,000 people who are far from God. But disobedience at times ties the hand of God. God said, try me and see if I won't pour out. But when we disobey, he won't pour out. He wants us to obey. God says, don't touch it and I will bless it. Our family, we don't do without. Number one, because we are first fruit people, we give above and beyond the 10%. We're committed to it, amen? But also we're blessed because of my grandfather. We're blessed because he was obedient. His blessing goes from generation to generation. I walk in stuff today that I didn't earn because of a seed that he was faithful to. So why not us, 10% all together? Why not now? Why not here at the Harv, here in Columbus and in Elkhart? And as I close and the ushers prepare to wait upon the people, I would just wanna leave this statement with you. What you do now determines what God does next. He wants the first fruit. The first fruit is a seed. If you sow a little bit, you'll reap a little bit. But if you, the Bible says if you sow generously, you will reap bountifully. So here's how you can give today as we walk into this new year of 2019. Pastor told us that 19 does mean judgment, but the Bible also says let judgment begin at the house of the Lord. And you should be glad that you have a group of people and a, and a pastor and a group of leaders that will teach you the first fruit law, the principle of first fruits. So today, if you've not been a faithful tither, make a commitment today and, and become a 10% tither today. Set it aside in the very beginning of each week. If you've already paid your tithe or given your tithe or sold your tithe, please uh, give a generous offering today and continue to invest in the mission and vision of what God is doing here in Columbus and also there in Elkhart. If you're watching online, you can just click on that banner there below and the give banner and uh, follow the prompts there. Please sew into this.
you're watching online, you're not gonna go to Applebee's today and say, oh, I, I paid the last time I was here. You need to contribute to what God is doing in this great work. If you're also, you can also give by text, 45777. Put in there the dollar sign in your amount and WHC and you can give right away. You can also give by a tithe envelope in the pew back pocket in front of you. Just pull that out, fill it out completely. Jeanette and I, in closing, decided that we're going to be a little more conscious because text to give is a great thing, but our daughter was not seeing us do that. And so we're going to be more conscious. We're going to, we're going to, we got a stack of envelopes now on our little office desk and we're, we, we now are being more conscious of her seeing us model that pattern as my grandfather did for us. So however you want to give today, just obey God and obey him first. Let me pray for you. Father, here in online and in Elkhart and here in Columbus, we love you and we want to obey you with the first fruits and we want to make a commitment that we will not waver from here in January, that we will be faithful tithers and givers as you have blessed us. Bless your people today as they continue to worship you in your giving in Christ's name. Gentlemen, you can wait upon the people. God bless you.
walked into more than a building. God's Spirit is moving, and it began hundreds of years ago and has changed millions of lives. It's a consecrated life of Smith Wigglesworth, where faith resided with such power. There were many documented cases where the dead were raised to life. Wigglesworth sought the presence of God in prayer every day. That same anointing passed to Howard Carter, whose teaching on the gifts of the Spirit radically changed the church. Those same gifts of the Spirit were manifested in the life and ministry of Lester Summerall. His worldwide influence changed nations for Christ. This is the gospel lineage, which produces the anointing and power of Pentecost witnessed from these pews each week. Charles Haddon Spurgeon carried the title of the Prince of Preachers. More than 10 million souls heard his persuasive presentation of God's redemption plan. Pastor Rod Parsley has taken the gospel to his generation with like fervor and zeal. Why we can't sit still? I'll tell you why we can't keep it quiet. We've been touched by fire. This isn't about your ministry. This is about thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The river of Pentecost that flowed through Wigglesworth, Carter, Sumrall, Spurgeon, still touches, cleanses, and empowers hearts and lives through the life and ministry of our pastor. Rod Parsley. Today is a very special day. Somebody is 62 and breaking through. It is our pastor, Pastor Rod Parson. Please remain standing with me for just a moment, if you will. We are thankful that for all these years, just as the gospel message has not changed, that pastor, your message has not changed either. We honor you for all that you have given, pastor, and we celebrate with you for all that is yet to be done. And we know that an attack from the enemy is an indicator of his belief in our destiny. Now, right in the middle of this birthday presentation, that was a word for somebody. We know that an attack of the enemy is an indicator of his belief in our destiny. And several years ago, the enemy launched an attack on our pastor, and it could have taken him out, should have taken him out, but God but God. And so we know in our knower that God is by no means through with you, but the best is yet to come. You've done a lot, but there's more to be done. He's seen a lot, but there's more to be seen. You've encountered a lot, but there's more to encounter. A lot of souls have come to saving faith, but there are more souls still to come to Christ. And we are in this thing with you, and we celebrate you as we all are standing in Elkhart. Would you join us and watching online? Pastor, for a moment, could you please join us on this platform while we celebrate you? Come on, put your hands together. You are a general of the faith, a prince of preachers, a modern-day Charles Spurgeon. And it's for those reasons that we thought it was appropriate and that you would appreciate highly sought after, yet hard to find, original handwritten notes of Charles Spurgeon. Come on, let's celebrate the man of God, church. To you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear pastor, happy birthday to you. God bless you, you may be seated.
I present to you the impossibility of forgiveness apart from a sanctified being. The modern church doesn't know how to handle terminology like holiness. It simply means all in. I promise you this, you set aside time for God. He will set aside time for you. Do you know every time you come into agreement with another believer, your everyday spiritual walk in God just multiplied 10,000 times over? Do you understand that you ought to make more devils tremble when you get up in the morning and open your eyes than a year ago you made when you were praying in the Holy Ghost? Do you understand this thing is progressive? I want to hear you roar. Oh, that's terrible. That's like, that's like you're at the opera or something. Really? 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 I thought I had some Valor students back. I thought, I thought, there, there, that sounds like a roar. Come on, a Shabbat. No, see, you die right off. Come on. The language of defeat is silence. The language of defeat is silence. The language of defeat is silence. The language of victory is a shout. Come on, let me hear you roar. Loose the lion. Come on, loose the lion. Come on, we're not just one lion, we are pride. A pride, a pride of lions. Shout like your best friend is about to be attacked and your shout's the only thing that can sway the adversary. Shout like he's trying to put his hands on your children. Shout like he dare touch your spouse. Shout like he's trying to gain entrance into your home. Shout it out. Let me hear you roar. Loose that lion. Come on. Come on. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. No, let him know you're there. Let cancer know your home. Let heart disease know your vessel is occupied. Give him no space. Give him no position of opportunity. Not here, devil. Not here, devil. Now let him know your home. Let your neighbor know they're not alone. Come on, you gotta learn to be relentless with your roar. Because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion. You know what that means? He attempts to imitate you. And you cannot allow his roar to be greater than yours. Come on, you got to learn to scream back, shout back, clap back, wave back. You got to get after him like a junkyard dog. Clap those hands, all ye people. Clap those hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting. Woo! Come before him with dancing and laughter and singing and every manifestation of joy. Here's what I know. No lion reacts to a little dog's bark.
Just shove your neighbor just a little bit. Shove him just a little bit and say, welcome to our pride. Tell them we roar around here. We shout around here. Every time I used to go to the doctor, gone for three years now, to have my throat scoped. And every time I go, before I get in the room, they bring out extra chairs to put in the examination room. Because every time I've gone, I, told, I tell them, because I'll, I'll have all kinds of people with me. I say, I say we, we travel in packs. You might handle one lone wolf. You might handle one lone lion, but you can't handle the pride. I said, you can't handle the pride. You can't handle us all together, devil. There is power in our agreement. One of us chases a thousand, Pastor Chris. Huh? I said, one of us, Chase, here's what I learned this week. Pastor Chris preached to us on that, on that devotion. And Pastor Chris said, one chases a thousand, your Bible says. And then your Bible messes up. Because your Bible doesn't say, if one chases a thousand, two chases two thousand. Wouldn't that be normal? Huh? Come here, baby. If one, if me standing out here can chase a thousand, then it would stand to reason that two of us could chase off 2,000. Talk to somebody and tell him he's talking true now. Come on, tell him he's talking true now. I'm about to feel this right now. Because let's see, one a thousand to two thousand. One a thousand to two thousand. One, two. A thousand, two thousand. One, two, a thousand, two thousand. But that's not what your Bible said. Look around this room. Look around that room, Elkhart. Let me hear you roar, because your Bible doesn't say two chases 2,000. That would be natural. God said one chases 1,000, two chase 10,000. So let me hear you roar, pride. Come on, somebody's fighting cancer. They need to know they're not alone. Somebody's under an assault. Their children are under assault. If any two of you on earth agree of touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done by our Father which art in heaven. Ask him anything you will. Ask him anything you will right now. Ask him anything you will. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Somebody needs to know they're not calling on their own. Let your neighbor know they can count on your roar. Grab your spouse by the hand and roar at them. Grab somebody you wish was your spouse and roar at them. No, no. I want to hear you roar, Elkhart. I want to hear you roar. 
want to hear you roar that poverty devil out of that county. I want to hear you roar. Ah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You may be seated quickly in your Bible, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 3. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of all his increase. Mm, holiness, first fruits tied together. Jump on over into the new covenant, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you, set you apart, strategically locate you wholly, completely. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions and body be preserved. Woo! So sickness can't take you before your time because you are preserved. I need some preserved folks. Just a, just a roar, that little underneath rumbling roar. Lift both hands and say, my body is preserved. My neurological system, my nervous system is preserved. No Alzheimer's disease, no dementia can come near our pride. This is our territory and we will drive out every intruder. You are illegal here. My mind is preserved. My memory is preserved. My peace is preserved. You can't spoil it. Woo, I feel God. I said, you can't spoil my joy because it's preserved. The only way he can spoil your mind, your will, your emotions, your body. Your body is created to renew itself every seven years. Every cell in your body is brand new every seven years. You are, there is nothing in you right now the same as it was seven years ago. God created you that way. So guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life guard your spirit my son attend to my words proverbs 4 20 incline your ear to my sayings let them not depart from your eyes not the kardashians let my words not depart from your eyes Keep them in the midst of your heart. Not some secular song full of sexual innuendo. Not some country song, woe is me and the train is coming and we're all broke. Not some song about the mud and the blood and the beer. If you want to sing a song about the blood, sing this one. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost. If you know it is the blood, let me hear the pride roar. Oh, 
Oh, I feel something moving right now. I feel power right now. I feel anointing right now. I feel blessing right now. I believe with your next roar, 100 people are going to be instantly healed by God's power. Come on, you've been fighting all week all by yourself. You, you not by yourself this morning. Shove your neighbor and shout, I got you. God just said to me, go ahead and let them celebrate. I'm infusing them with a fresh dose of preservative. Hey! Come on, strength! your strength strength like no other strength like no other reaches to me to me I can't lose my mind lose my it's mind. preserved it's preserved <laughs> hey hey you can't touch my hope. You can't touch my hope. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Uh -huh. So just receive right now a fresh infusion of Holy Ghost preservative on your hope. My body is preserved. You shouldn't even think about dying to at least 120. You hear me? There are people on the earth going to live 120. I, I'm believing Brother Copeland going to live 120. Hallelujah. Glory to God. David, he just preserved you this week. Sir. Look at you. Yes. Thought you had cancer. Yeah. Woo! They looked last week, couldn't find any. No. Took him in and scoped him real deep this week. Hey. Couldn't find any. Couldn't find any. Woo. Woo. I need to tell somebody what you've been worried about will not kill you. It will not kill you. Quit preserving the memory of what killed your mama and what killed your daddy. Because in reality, your daddy's still alive. He's sitting on a throne. Preach, man. He's ruling over heaven and earth. He's ruling over the affairs of men. He's a, and I need to tell somebody, tell it. your money is preserved. It's preserved. Shout about your neighbor getting rich. Hey! Scream that your neighbor is getting rich. 
Rejoice that your neighbor is getting rich. Praise that your family is becoming rich. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the leader of our pride, has already told us it's his will that we prosper and be in health that our whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless then no guilt gonna kill you it's not gonna kill you i think you ought to just take a minute and celebrate your life i got up this morning and started laughing till I couldn't breathe. I made it. I made it. I made it. Somebody praise him that you made When I it. couldn't pray, the pride prayed. When I couldn't shout, the pride shouted. When I couldn't attack, the pride went hunting. Yes, sir. Somebody better bless his holy name. Numbers, 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 chapter 23, uh, verses 18 to 24. Numbers, Numbers, 18, num- 23, 18. Uh, then Balaam. Uh, become familiar with that name, Balaam. Uh, Balaam was a seer. Uh, He was also somewhat of a soothsayer. There are times when there is a struggle in a human person between two gifts and two worlds. And that's why it's very, very important uh, that your Bible says, try the spirits. Because just because it's right on Tuesday doesn't mean it's right on Thursday. The same tongue that blesses is anointed also to curse. In a true fivefold ministry office gift, in their countenance is blessing, in their smile is joy, and in their frown is cursing. This has always been and will forever be true. Balaam, a seer, a somewhat of a mystic, walking between two worlds. Balaam took up his second oracle. Uh, He would have actually four oracles combined four prophecies, uh, four words. He took up his oracle and said to Balak, Balak, now of that group of Moab and Ammon, were coming against Israel. Balak wanted to overthrow Israel. 
both northern and southern kingdoms. But he needed help. So he went to the prophet. Everybody do this. <laughs> Air quotations. The prophet. A lot of times I see folk introduced as the prophet and I go, the prophet. Balaam is recruited, if you will, by Balak to curse Israel. And so they built seven altars. They put the fire on the altar. They shed the blood on the altar. And Balaam went away to be in the presence of God, Jehovah, there to inquire what he should say back to Balak concerning the cursing of Israel. Here was the response. Rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, son of Zippor. God is not a man. Now try not to shout. Because you missed it right there. Because if there's anything really, really good, 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 good about the God, God, God you serve is that he's not a man, man, man. I want you to give him glory that he's not a man. Come on, give him glory. Men will lie to you. Men will curse you. Men will damn you. Men will deny you. Men will attempt to persuade you. But God is not a man that he should lie. If you got book on it and the book is right and they are wrong, it will be true and cannot lie. If he said you're healed, you're healed. If he said you're blessed, you're blessed. If he said you're preserved, you are preserved. Give him praise, give him glory. I, I'm just reading this now. Let's try again. God is not a man. All right, Elder Lowe, you're going to have to help him this time. God is not, see, some of you can't relate to God because you had a bad relationship. Some of you can't relate to God because you never had a daddy. Some, some of you can't relate to God because you had a daddy that abused you. That's why you think it's okay for that man you got now to abuse you. But I'm here to tell you, God's about to preserve you. God is not a man. That he should lie. That he should repent. Has he said? Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and he will not make it good? I have a prophetic word for everyone in this building today. Every word of that Bible prophetically belongs to you and will come to pass exactly as it is written. Beyond that, any true prophetic word ever uttered over your life will not fall to the ground. It will come to pass. Claim it. It's preserved. I can't help it, y'all. Every word ever spoken over you is preserved. 
That's the reason Jesus was able to say, for the joy that was set before me, I endured the cross because David said concerning me that he would not leave my soul in hell nor suffer his darling to see corruption. And for thousands of years, that uttered prophetic word waited. It waited while he was born of that virgin in a barn because that's where a lamb ought to be born. That word waited while he walked into his public ministry at 30 years of age. And then at 33, that word still waited. What do you mean? He won't leave my soul in hell. Look at me writhing in my own blood. Look at me suffering and sighing. Watch me as I'm crying and dying. And preacher, you want to tell me that the word will come to pass? Hold on now. On the third day, the stone got rolled away. I dare you to get on your feet and rejoice and shout because your word is waiting. My word is preserved. My word is waiting. He said it heal me and I shall be. What is the devil going to do with a bunch of people that know they shall have it? Give me that. We are afflicted, but not cast down. What's that? I'm hearing that. Get it? Just pray in the Holy Ghost. God's doing something. What's happening in you is greater than what's happening to you right now. Just begin to say it. I'm being preserved. I'm being preserved. My eyesight's being preserved. When I go back to the doctor for my eye examination, I'm believing it's going to be better, not worse. Well, I'm getting older. Go ahead. I'm getting younger. I'm preserved. You find it? Can you see it? Where is it? But we have this preservative in earthen vessels. Yes, <laughs> Do you know that this is preservative? This, your Bible says, is medicine. We have a distinguished doctor on the front row. If I need blood pressure medicine, doctor, which I don't, but if I did, I would need to take it every day. I would need to take it at the same time every day to give the medicine its optimum opportunity 
that's a reason I take a double dose three times a day. The words that I say to you are spirit and they are life. Will a two a come an eye of this ever pass away? Then why are you? You don't have to die sick. I don't have a key to anything around here. <laughs> I can't even get into my own area of the building without calling somebody. And when I call them and they answer, I say, beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> what does that mean? Let me in. I intend to go over one day, sit down, Say, beam me up, Jesus. I'm ready now. I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I'm ready. This word, is a preservative. It will preserve your mind. It will preserve your peace. It will preserve your joy. And it will make your spirit strong as a lion. Let me hear you roar. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power is from God and not from ourselves. We are troubled on every side. I need some deacons. Hey, God. Turn, turn elders mic on. Out here where I can hear it. We're going to try this again. Now you ready? Yes, sir. Uh, 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 we are troubled on every side. Yeah. Yet not distressed. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed. But we are not cast down. We are persecuted. But we are not forsaken. Not forsaken. We are cast down, cast down. But we are not destroyed. Not destroyed. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're preserved. Let me hear you. Loose that lion. I speak life. Life, 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 I speak life, 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 life. Find yourself somewhere and glorify him. is a preservative your praise is clearing out your arteries right now your praise is washing your blood right now your praise is giving you hope right now take him at his word believe him trust 
him. He is hastening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your word, oh God, is forever settled in heaven. Have you not said it? Shall you not do it? You hasten after your word to perform it. Have you not said it? Shall you not do it? Your word will accomplish everything you sent it into the earth to do. Have you not said it? Will you not do it? You said you'd heal the blind. Have you not said it? Will you not do it? You said you were Jehovah Rafika, my healer. You said I am healed and I am whole. You said you were wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was laid upon you and with your stripes I was and I am healed. You said you would preserve me. Have you not said it? Will you not do it? He said, whatsoever you will ask the Father in his name, he will give it to you. Let me deal with the religious element. Well, but now, Brother Rod, uh, that only means if we ask according to his will. You have the emphasis on the wrong syllable. He did not say, if it's his will, he will answer you. He said, it's his will to answer you. If that's not true, how did Israel ask for a king when God said, knew better and said they shouldn't have one, but gave him one anyway? He's obligated to. That's the reason you run around telling everybody how sick and depressed you are, and God's obligated to see to it that your words come to pass. I'm afraid. So God lifts his protective covering and says, okay. We are snared, not by his words, but by the words of our own mouths. For in the tongue is both blessing and cursing, life and death. Speak life! Oh, Jesus. This is the confidence, steadfast trust and assurance that you and I have in him this very day, that if we ask anything, comma, according to his will, he hears us, comma. God, that rides the wild wings of the morning, hastens after his word from your mouth to perform it. And it's very simple anyway. He left you 1,166 pages of his will. Pray it. 
I can pray for two hours at least without saying anything but his word. Remind ye me of the words I have spoken to you, says the Lord. Why do you think your words are so important? His words through you. <sighs> and we know that whatsoever we have requisitioned of him is granted for our immediate possession. That sounds like a little putty cat. That sounds like a little putty cat. Then Jesus said, whatever you ask me, I will do it so that our Father may be glorified in me. What a power! What a glory! What a blessing! What a joy unspeakable and full of glory! Be seated, please. I'm going to very quickly give you a couple of things that I pray God will allow me to bring back on next Sunday when so many more of our family can be here because I think it's important for as many of us as possibly can to hear it. Elkhart, online, here in Columbus, Listen to what he says. Shall he not make it good? Behold, uh, verse 20. I have received a command to bless. No man can curse what God has blessed no weapon formed against us shall prosper greater is he that is within us than he that is in this world. If any two of us agree touching anything that we shall ask, it shall be done for us. Hear the word of the Lord. I gotta get through this. Has he not said it and will he not do it? Verse 21. Verse 20, he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob. Stop! Stop bringing up your infidelities, your indiscretions, your mistakes, your ingratitude, your spirit of slothfulness. Stop bringing up your past sins which he 
has forgotten. It is an insult to his blood. Have you asked him once to forgive you? Whatever it is. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. This is not Roman Catholicism. We don't save up our sins to make an appointment with a man to confess them. The moment the Holy Spirit quickens our spirit, repent, be zealous, repent, be zealous, repent, and never bring it up again. In so doing, your Bible teaches you crucify him afresh. I got to get to the end of this. It's just the text. Behold, I've received a command. I need you to know that 2,000 years ago, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. At that very moment, <laughs> he refuses to observe your iniquity. He did it under the old covenant. Israel was as backslidden as she could be. And Judah the same. But God said through this halfway prophet. He blessed them. I can't curse them. He refuses to acknowledge their iniquity. What does that mean? That's grace, baby. What does that mean? It means they deserved and the prophet knew it and Balak knew it and Israel knew it and God knew it. But he willed not to hold it against them and bless them. How much more under the blood? Uh, oh, Jesus. Okay. Okay, you, I'm losing you now. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him. Shout, our God is with us. Here it comes. And the shout of a king is among them. That doesn't mean you're the king that's shouting. That means you are shouting in the presence of the king that made it possible. God brings them out of Egypt. Shove your neighbor and say, I'm on my way out. He gives them strength like a wild ox. Watch this now. For there is no sorcery against Jacob. I submit to you. You do not have a generational curse. You have a generational blessing. We used to sing an old song, said, I am blessed. I am blessed. 
every day that I live, I'm blessed. When I wake up in the morning or I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. And I am in His pride. I am the offspring of Judah. Well, let me hear you roar. nor can there be any divination against Israel. We bind every principality. Whew, I don't know if you do, but I do. I bind every principality and every power. I bind the spirits of wickedness spiritual wickedness in high places you hear me columbus ohio this is my city you hear me elkhart indiana that is my city you will not overlord here i break the power of divination I break the power of sorcery. I break the power of cursing. I break the power of iniquity. I break the power of sex trafficking. I break the power of addiction. I break your power. Let me hear you roar, pride. It must be said of us whoo what the Lord has done he healed my body he saved my mind he saved me just in time look what the Lord has done shove your neighbor and say take a good long look at me look what the Lord has done I should have been dead. I should have lost my mind. I should have lost everything I had. Let me hear you roar, pride. Here it is now. I've been waiting all morning to get here. Woo, look what the Lord has done. Touch those pews. Say, look what the Lord has done. Look at those television cameras. Look what the Lord has done. Elkhart, Indiana, dance in that building. Say, look what the Lord has done. Touch your body and say, look what the Lord has done. Touch your mind and say, look what the Lord has done. Verse 24. Look a people rising like a lioness and lifts herself up like a lion we're no longer crouching in fear we're no longer laying at home watching on tv on wednesday night we were up nearly 400 people last wednesday Let's be up 800 this Wednesday. I thought I heard you roar. I see a church, glorious garments washed white and glistening clean in the blood of the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has made us one with him. We are his pride and his joy. We are his exceeding great reward. We are the first fruits of his suffering.
it shall not lie down until. On Monday morning, it shall not lie down. At four o'clock on Sunday afternoon, it shall not lie down. Do you know that this ministry that God raised up from nothing in the middle of a cornfield on right road, this ministry, the sun never sets 24 hours a day around the world on this gospel being preached from this pulpit 24 hours a day around the world to the world. It shall not lie down. We shall not lie down. I see a glorious church rising out of obscurity. They thought we were gone. They thought the likes of us would not be seen again in America or the world. Our response to you is, we're just getting up. We shall not lie down until we devour our prey and drink the blood of its slain. Here's good news. That devil is defeated. I'm finished. That devil is. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. going I'm going to freak you out next week we're going to talk about a lion pride next week what does it mean to be in the pride of lions you can be seated Elder G, would you join me up here and give me some leaders. Give me about 12 men and women. Get right here in the middle. Now you all stand back there. You all stand back there. The lion is the only member of the large cats that refuses to dwell alone. I don't need you. That refuses to fight alone. That refuses to hunt alone. That refuses to live alone. Fierce in the protection of their pride. Bringing down game as large as an African elephant and water buffalo known as the fiercest animal in the wild. But never alone. Alone. He's defeated, destroyed, broken, killed.
We're going that way. We're going that way. Now come and get him. 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 Stand up, Chad. Stand up, Chad. Because he's not one hiding. That's not what the pride does. The pride attacks. Let me hear you roar! Look at your neighbor and say, you're all right. I got you. We got you. Now let's go. I'm hungry. Blessed are they. Did you notice he did not say, Blessed are you when you hunger, when you thirst after righteousness? You shall be filled. That's not what he said. Blessed are they. I told you a week ago. I refuse ever again to hang out with people what ain't hungry. I refuse to hang out with so-called church goers who have no thirst, no hunger for souls, no thirst for the blood of our adversary, nobody with a taste to destroy cancer and cast out devils and speak with new tongues, nobody thirsty for a move of God, nobody hungry for His presence. Let me hear you roar. On the way out today, everybody's going to get one of these. Look at them. They're all different. There's a green tall one. But he will perfectly connect to a blue little one which will perfectly connect, God bless you white folks, to a black one who will perfectly connect to a red one, who will perfectly connect to a brown one, who will perfectly connect to a white one. From the littlest, to the biggest together we can build anything somebody shove a neighbor and say welcome to the pride welcome to the pride i'm going to give everyone one of these There are 86 of these for every single human being on earth. <laughs> there are 645 billion of these in the world. Stacked together, 
there are 2,386,065 miles tall. Ten times higher than the moon. <laughs> One Lego can sustain 953 pounds of force without breaking. Shove somebody. Say, I dare the devil to try to break me. Get ready now. One Lego block. Uh -huh. Give me the next one. One Lego block. Look. Can support 375,000 other Lego bricks before buckling. How many can you support? How many in the pride can you support? Can your prayers? Who's not saved because of your prayerlessness? Who's not reached because of your non-tithing? Who isn't excited because every time they talk to you, you talk as though God was dead? Who are you supporting? Can you imagine if every one of us could support 376,000 just like us? Well, you can. That's how nations are born in a day. How many people live in Pakistan? 206 million. 206 million. And let's see. We have 26 churches there. 23, I'll speak, but in March we'll have 26. <laughs> but you know the key to these little puppies? They're really not worth anything by themselves. Yeah. Your only value is to, regarding that to which you are connected. Zionism stood up boldly in the face of the Nazi regime and said, you might kill six million of us, but you can't kill all of us. Everyone standing, please. To what are you connected? Here's your doggy bag to go home with. To what and to whom are you most connected? I asked that question last Sunday. I wonder how many of us changed anything. To what and to whom? Are you most connected? I thought today, seems like every time we get one of these little drifts of snow, it comes on Saturday night or Sunday morning. Anybody notice that? Why didn't it ever come on Monday morning? Because the devil could care less about you getting to work. In fact, 99% of you would not miss work. I mean, come on, children, we're not even at a level one snow emergency. Somebody said, are we going to cancel church tomorrow? I didn't know we could cancel church. Cancel church. Right, canceling church because of some snow 
Pastor Cal and Jan over there, they had 12 inches on Halloween. How cold is it there today? Minus 20 degrees. Yeah, Pastor Jan said, this is a heat wave. 20 below. How much snow do you get like on Halloween? Over a foot, foot and a half on Halloween, 20 below zero. Did you stay home from church? No, no, you didn't stay home from church. And you didn't either. So give yourself a great big, check me out. I said, let me hear you roar. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If I was you, I'd want to hook up with victorious people. I wouldn't follow losers. I'd hook up with people who know their God. I wouldn't connect with complainers. I wouldn't connect with Debbie Downer and Louie Loser. I'd connect with the pride of God. I'd connect with the joy of the Lord. I'd connect with people who know their God. I'd connect with people that'll surround me when I'm in trouble. People that'll pray for me every day. People that'll encourage me every time I see them. People that'll build me up in the Word of God. People that refuse to let me go when I mess it up. People that love me more when I get it wrong than they do when I get it right. People that want to serve me and love me and bless me and strengthen me and encourage me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This time tomorrow, we may be in eternity. This time tomorrow, we had 25, 30 people born again in here Wednesday night. And there are some here this morning, you're not sure of your eternal destiny and that's all right, we got you covered. We got you surrounded right now. And the adversary that dogged your tracks before you came in here today, here and in Elkhart and watching online, he can't get to you right now. No, sir, he can't get to you. We bind every temptation, every thought. We bind every distraction. We bind anything and everything that would keep you from having Judgment Day honesty and receiving the blessed life of the living Christ today. We bind it. Now that mess is waiting on you outside the building. Unless today you surrender to Jesus. Why don't you do that right now? Why don't you, when I count to three, lift your hand and say, today I choose to become a part of the pride of God. I choose to become a part of Christ's family. I choose to resist Satan and receive Jesus. I choose to go to heaven and not to hell. Do it on three and let's pray. One, two, three. Raise that hand, leave it up, leave it up. As quickly as you can, push your way down to this altar. Come quickly, bring your belongings, bring your belongings. Come on, while we shout and surround you. Come on, pride. Come on, you raised your hand, come on. Jesus said, you are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Dozens more of you raised your hand. Come on. Get it right. Get it right. Come on. Down to every aisle, across the back. Come on. Come on. We'll wait on you. I thought I heard a pride roar with joy. Come on, seven, eight, nine, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray. on never been here before coming into the pride today let them know you're happy about it this is it this is it here we are here we are Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. Can you see me? Your struggle is over. It's over. Some of you thought you were born again and you weren't. Some of you came to Valor Christian College and you were right with God. But this morning, yeah. all that changes hey. forever. Hallelujah. And believe you me, there are a whole lot more folk out here that think they're right, that if they'd open their heart to God, the most tender hearts are always the first to respond. Yes. Yeah, there are others back there that Holy Ghost is going to have to chip away a little bit. We'll get you. Yeah. We'll get you in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We refuse to leave you yep. behind. Yep. Pray this prayer out loud, like really loud. Everybody pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ I, come to you today, I come to you today just as I am. Just as I am. No, pretense. no pretense. I'm not pretending. I'm not, pretending. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Jesus, Jesus. I want you in my heart. I want you, I want heart. you to live through me. I want, you to live I want through your me. power I want your and power your forgiveness. And your forgiveness. You, said I could have it, you said I could have it, and so I receive it. So I receive now, it. now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus I, am I am born again. Born again. I, am I am a new creature. A new creature. God no longer remembers my sin. God I have no past, only a future. And it feels so good to be forgiven. I think I'll clap and shout and dance and roar and spin. Come on, let's sing it, church. Nothing out there but snow. Let's sing a minute. Let's surrender. Now say his name. Ah. I release to you the life, the liberty, the freedom. Yes. The joy, yes. the peace yes. of a child of God. Yes. Shout, I'm his. I'm his. And he is mine. And he is mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some folks, listen to my instructions, please, not your own. Please listen to my instructions. Everyone here 
ushers, you have clipboards. Miss Patty, you have clipboards. Come and uh, some of the, you ministers, go ahead and let's get those filled out while folks are right down here this morning. Usually we would send folks back, but just take a moment. Well, I'll tell you what, you'll fill it out, won't you? Okay, as soon as you receive one, take it to your seat. Take it to your seat and fill it out at your seat. That's more comfortable. If one of our ministers is ministering with you, they can go right to your seat with you. Praise God. Everybody take one of those. Pride, let's thank God for this morning. Everybody else shut down and we cranked up. Blessed be God forever. All right, we're going to make a couple announcements. Who's coming? Pastor Chris. Yes, sir. Talk to, hey, Wednesday night, man. Oh. Now look, we increased the lighting for Wednesday night. We condensed the parking areas. So there's lots of people in the parking areas. We also went and got this week three golf carts to bring you right from your car to the front door. Take you back. So you don't need to worry about that. We got hot food in the in the connect center out front i think they ate about i don't know you know i don't know how we had two thousand people and ate seven thousand hot dogs but anyway there is the feeding of the five thousand with the loaves and fishes so the hot dogs multiplied unfortunately pray for the popcorn it had no anointing and we ran out so we we need to fix that next week and we'll have hot chocolate and drinks and you know like non-alcoholic drinks non-alcoholic drinks yeah and and good stuff for you so you come right from work get you something to eat fellowship and then we got a great word clean i cannot wait to get back in it this wednesday night okay wednesday night now to our online congregation we love you god bless you thank you for joining us y'all can one more time can we thank god for this man of god for the word and for